So welcome back everybody. My name is Andrew and you're watching the Kelly's Country Life. If this is your first time visiting the channel, thanks so much for stopping by. We post weekly videos like this, so consider subscribing. All right, so the time has finally come. I have just got over my two weeks of COVID, called it twice by the way, and it really put a damper on this project. A lot of y'all have been looking forward to the outdoor kitchen build. We're starting that in this episode. So real quick, I do want to say that this project is sponsored by Vivor. If you haven't heard of Vivor, a lot of y'all have. They carry everything under the sun, and I literally mean everything from ice makers to restaurant equipment to home equipment to outdoor equipment to stuff for your tractors. Anything you can think of, go to their website, plug it in. They probably have it. So as you can see, we have a smorgasbord of items here that's really gonna spruce up this outdoor kitchen build. And again, a big thanks to Vivor for sending some of this stuff out. And by the way, I contacted them because I stumbled across some stuff on their website and was like, man, this will really make this kitchen look a whole lot better. Now we're gonna show this stuff off a little bit later in the episode because we've gotta pull some of it out to start framing up and building our rough skeleton today. So we'll talk about that then. So I thought it would be fun to do something. A lot of y'all reached out a while back with design ideas and uh, material ideas for this outdoor kitchen space. And a very common response was we should do Corian or those man-made countertops. Well, I went and priced them. Everybody around here cuts them and installs them. So it's an all-in-one price. Wow, they were not as affordable as most people were thinking. So I thought I would do something fun here. I'm gonna try to build this entire kitchen everything from the appliances to the materials you name it for the cost of what the quote was on corian countertops so in the corners and all throughout the walls of this house is six by six post this is a post frame house a pole barn house so what i'm going to do i can actually access one right here underneath this hardy trim it's going to shoot a screw in or you can use a nail whatever you want and i'm going to hang a string off of it so because these posts were originally laid out perfect with a string system just like this, I know I can pull from post to post and get a perfectly straight line and a good starting point or a reference point for where I want the back side of our kitchen bar top to go. And then we're gonna take off again this direction. So my plans is to lay the cabinets out in even measurements like eight foot here it'll utilize eight foot paneling eight foot material perfectly eight foot lumber two by material and ten foot that direction and i bought the majority of everything in ten foot minus the paneling that i still have to go back and get so this will help with cost overall layout um, and just kind of get things where we think they need to be All right, I'm gonna show you all my layout real quick and what I have done, and by quick, I mean there's lightning bolts dropping right here. Too close for me, so I need to get all this back in the box and get inside for a minute. So I have literally spent hours today drawing and laying out on the floor, making a few mistakes, drawing out our entire layout. Layout is absolutely critical for something like this. I do not mind spending an entire day doing layout to make sure tomorrow I'm not tearing out and wasting a bunch of lumber and everything else. All right, so as you can see, it's next day. We had a heck of a lightning storm come through yesterday and shut me down for several hours. So I went ahead and laid out all of my post brackets. I'm using four by fours in most corners. So you can see that I spent a lot of time yesterday drawing out, lining out. I even marked everywhere that I want a support post. I'm gonna be anchoring these plates down with Tapcon screws. These are made specifically for concrete. They're a quarter inch thick, and I'm going to over drill the hole by about an inch. Always wear safety glasses when drilling in concrete. It can actually bust back out and up toward your face. I love this drill. It makes such quick work of this.
All right, now that I have all my holes drilled, I'm gonna blow the dust off the top so my bracket sits flush. And most importantly, I'm gonna blow down into the holes to get any buildup of dust and chip concrete out of there. The last thing you want is to tighten your fastener down and it doesn't securely fasten down your bracket because your hole's packed full of materials. All right, now I'm gonna take my bracket and put these Tapcon screws down in there and I'm gonna secure them with my impact driver. And I'm not gonna go full torque on these because you can't actually strip out that hole. All right, that's not going anywhere. All right, so we're getting ready to cut our four by four post and mount in the brackets that we just put down. And I need to connect the post to the brackets. I could use screws, although it needs to be coated screws because I'm using pressure treated lumber. I could hand nail and do a lot of different things. But y'all, a lot of y'all that watched me build this house, remember this guy right here. It's the Bostitch F33PT. I love this nailer. It's a bit big, bulky, and heavy. But there's one cool thing I wanted to show y'all about this nailer right here. So this is your framing nailer tip. You push this button, take this right out. Now I can convert this particular model to metal connecting nailing. You see that little finder right there? You stick that in the holes on those metal brackets that are already pre-drilled from factory. Put that in the hole, pull the trigger, and your nail shoots right through that hole. So no hand nailing. Plus, because this gun rule will run metal connecting nails, look at the shank on these. Much, much thicker material. That's just what you want in a metal connecting nail because it needs a lot of shear strength. These have it far thicker than your standard framing nail. And I'm also running hot dip galvanized nails as well. Again, you got to do that in that new salt cured lumber because it will corrode uh, fasteners quickly. Now, because I'm about to make several of the same types of cuts, there's something you can do on these miter saw stands. So I've made my first mark to the length that I want to cut several pieces, make sure the blade's going to line up where I want it, and we'll come down here, flip this flat bracket over, adjust it up. All right, now we'll run this back in till it bumps that piece of wood, lock everything down. Now, every time I slide a piece and make contact with this, I know I'm at the exact distance that I want to cut. That's a feature that a lot of people don't utilize. Slide that down, make contact, ready to cut again, get the same exact size. All right, so I got my first post set in and lined up with all the marks that I made on the floor. By the way, we're going for around a 45 to 46 inch finished bar height. That's the very top, which is higher than normal. Most people have a 42 inch, uh, but we're going for what's called an extra tall bar top. So when you're nailing these posts in like this, I'm just gonna use a quick framing square, get them close. They don't have to be perfect, but you do want them close because even though I'm nailing them in, they're still gonna have some give and wiggle room this way. There's no point in putting a level on them just right now. Um, the framing square work just fine. Put it right in that little hole down here. And now I've got six metal connecting nails going in in a matter of seconds. So I've pretty much built this house by myself 
which means I have worked by myself quite a bit and I've had to learn a lot of techniques to hold things and to be a second, third, or fourth set of hands. A cheap set of clamps can by far be your biggest helper and friend when it comes to holding materials if you're working by yourself. For example, I'm about to run a long board all the way through here. So I'm just gonna throw a clamp up right here. Just get close. Put one down here. Now I can just bring my board in here, loosely place it. And let these uh, clamps roughly hold it in place. It's not perfect, but now I can easily work with the material. A good set of clamps has saved me time and time again working by myself. So you can see I'm being a little odd with the way I'm laying out some lumber. Some of it I'm laying flat because I'm gonna do almost like stud framing down here for all my doors. And then some of it, I'm putting it straight up and down like this to get the strength for the plywood that's gonna lay up here, then the cement board, then ultimately my uh, tabletop, which I have, or countertop, which I forgot to mention to y'all, we've decided to go with tile, but I'm doing it in a unique way, a special type of tile, and I'm trimming it out in a way that I think it's gonna be DIY friendly and look good, not just like your standard old tile countertop. All right, so here's another one of those situations to where the clamps just come in handy. Gives me that second set of hands that I desperately need in a situation like this. And I don't use this drill often. It's a right angle drill. It really comes in handy for getting in tight spaces like this. And uh, I'm actually going to screw up some big pan head screws to hold this drawer set up into these timbers that I just put in, as well as this piece right here. I know Dewalt now makes that little right angle attachment. Actually, they didn't come up with it. That thing, I've been using one of those for 15 or 20 years from a different brand. They just don't have the torque and they don't hold up like a right angle drill, even though this is a really old model right here. I am at a stopping point with this project. Got to make a big material run and we're running into the weekend here. Let's show you where we're at. So I kind of just did a lot of work in without recording because it was the same old, same old. So I'll give y'all a look at the layout here because this is your first real time getting to see everything mounted in place. But I want to let you know what I have done to every single drawer set and every single uh, door. You can see I boxed it out completely. And that is so whenever I come on this other side right here and lay my wood sheathing, my paneling against all this, I can come back with my router with a trim bit and these pieces will be out. I can punch through, trim out that square and then reinstall the doors once the sheathing's on the outside. So everything is nice and boxed out. 
Now I started laying in my, basically my studs over here because we're gonna put a thin sheathing on the outside here. And uh, I wanna make for sure I have a very tight stud spacing so there's no warps in this paneling that we're gonna get. This actually kind of a groove paneling, somewhat mimics the look of the house, but not exactly the same. I have also spaced all my bottom plates off of the floor, did that for a very specific reason. We're gonna leave a gap all the way around this entire structure because water does blow up here. We're gonna pressure wash the porch, storms, rain, everything blow water in, and we want a little bit of air to be able to make it underneath the bar to dry it out. So uh, that was important to us and something that we thought we really should add. So I'm not gonna start on putting my two by fours over here for vertical supports for the paneling because we have to figure out something here coming up in the next episode. All right, so I figured a good way to wrap this episode up is to give y'all your first big visual on the way everything is gonna look. A lot of y'all been excited about this project, asking about it. So here we go. Let's go ahead and roll through all the stuff that Vivor sent us real quick. And then I'm gonna show you what we chose for our countertop and what cooking appliances we're gonna put out here. All right, so for starters right here, I thought this would be the best place for it. We have a trash can pull out, and uh, I don't know if I have the right size can for this or not. It's one I grabbed out of the house. Looks like I can go with an even bigger one. So this is gonna be a couple of access doors right here because this is the area that's gonna get really interesting, and I've gotta spend some time thinking about this. So I'm probably gonna be cutting, I know I'm gonna be cutting this board out and some back here, and we're gonna build a drop down area in here for our blackstone. So I'm gonna take the legs off of our 36 inch blackstone and we're gonna put it right in here. And I'm still making my mind up what I'm gonna do. I'm probably gonna tile that area. I know I wanna put concrete backer board. I wanna do everything I can to make sure whatever materials are there are fireproof and safe. So I'm still playing with that in my head, but we're gonna make our decision really quick. So this entire section right here will be dropped down. The floor will be down here. And uh, like I said, we're gonna have a 36 inch blackstone here with room all the way around it for it to kind of breathe and get the air, the hot air up and out. So that's gonna be exciting. That's what this whole space is really about is our blackstone that we use all the time. Now right here beneath the blackstone, I thought it'd be a good spot. This is a three drawer pull out. We're gonna put like our spices and whatever else in here for cooking. Now there is nothing that we can do to make this space uh, rodent or bug proof. L let's just face it, it's an outside space. There's no possible way to seal this up without just spending way too much time and money. So whatever we do put in here will be in a glass container and then we'll, we've already done ordered glass spice racks, which will be inside of a glass container. So nothing should be able to chew through or get into that. And if we wind up having an issue with that out here, well, our spices would just go back inside. Plus we got to see how they react to the heat and humidity out here, but it's going to be in a closed space. So we're going to play with that. And if y'all have some experience with that, let us know. Worst case scenario, they just go back inside whenever we're done cooking for the afternoon. Over here is another door set. So we have plenty, I'm utilizing, as you can see, there's no open space. I'm utilizing all the space inside in here. So on the next episode, we're also gonna build uh, lower shelving inside of this as well. Huge, and I mean huge storage back here. What that's gonna be for, we're probably gonna wind up putting a toaster oven and a microwave out here that we can take in and out and put up on our big table top here. This is gonna be the spot where those are gonna go. So over here, this entire space right here is food prep area where we can put our food, put our seasons on, wrap it up in tinfoil, whatever that may be. So we have another two drawer set here. This is gonna be the perfect one for saran wrap, tinfoil, things like that for covering up our dishes. Uh, maybe, I don't know, one of these areas will probably have pot holders, things like that. And then of course, big drawer storage underneath here, or big door storage, I should say. Right here is our sink. We originally were just gonna go with a little small hand washing sink because we're still not planning on doing dishes out here. But let's face it, you're gonna wind up throwing dirty utensils, a pan, a few other things there. So we did wind up going for a deeper, bigger sink, although this is not as big as they make, but I'm working with a limited room here. It's plenty big enough for pans, sheet pans, um, nine by 13 bacon dishes, things like that. So this will be the sink area. And then down here is gonna be access for the plumbing. And there's also a gas line back there, which I can access through here. Now, in addition to the big blackstone area that we're gonna build here on the next episode, we decided we wanna go ahead and do a full cooktop out here. I was originally just gonna do a two burner cooktop, 
but I decided to go ahead and get a five burner. So it's got the big powerful burner in the middle, a couple simmer burners and your standard ones right there. Here's all the knobs. And we're gonna have this plumbed into our big propane tank as well. I'm actually gonna notch this area out that you're seeing right here. And that's, uh, that's where this is gonna be. I'm gonna bring it a little bit closer to us. Plus we're gonna have a bar top overhang right here that I don't want interfering with pots and pans. All right, we'll briefly talk, because I know this episode's probably running long, but ultimately what we decided for our tops is 12 by 24 tile. We're gonna do a really tight uh, spacing for our grout line. We're doing extra dark grout. It's almost, it's a charcoal colored grout as well, almost a black. That way it doesn't show any stains or any issues. I know that's a lot of concern for people. And we're gonna seal this up. Um, really, really well before we use it. Seal the tile and seal the grout, but we went dark everything so it shouldn't show stain. And I did the 24 inch tile, so, well, you only have grout lines down the middle. I don't have grout lines running everywhere else, so I can, I can butt it and have limited grout lines. Now also in the next episode, we've still got to build our bar top and supports up here. But long story short, I'm gonna use the same 12 by 24 tiles and we're gonna run 12 inch ones all the way down, basically making a big L shape. All right, without running this episode much longer, I know a lot of our everyday viewers was really involved and sent a lot of suggestions out on how they wanted this built. And a lot of people are gonna wonder why we did not go out to this post. Well, look at there. If we went to this post with the cabinets, then brought the bar out to here, look at how much more room, much more real estate of the porch it takes up. Then you've got your chairs sitting somewhere over in here we're getting so close to the edge. We have been really watching this house over the last few months since we've been living in it. And this is about the only dry spot that remains on the porch whenever we get these severe afternoon thunderstorms that blow in all the time. So bringing the bar top all the way out to here, one takes up walking room and real estate of the porch. We don't want to take up any more. We have plans for all this space. And it was just constantly going to have our black stone, our cooktop, bar top, everything getting wet, getting unnecessarily wet, our bar stools. Other people constantly asked about why we didn't open this end. Well, it takes up way too much storage, way too much uh, countertop area. And I need to run electrical and plumbing gas lines through here. Keep in mind, we're going to have electrical outlets up here. I'm doing under uh, counter lighting, all kinds of fun stuff's coming. Plus, if we did the bar where you open and walk in this way, the bar would have had to stop right here because of our windows. Well, you would have lost several feet of the bar. It would have been much smaller. Plus, the last thing I want when you're pulling up in the yard is to look right into a kitchen that's got towels hanging and utensils and all. It just doesn't look good. Now we'll have a nice clean wall over there and we can put decorations and stuff like that on there. The last thing I forgot to mention, the refrigerator is going right in here. I'm gonna build a little cubby and we're gonna do a same tiled top right here. You can see it's a drop down top and we're using this window as a pass through. So whenever Tiffany or me is inside, somebody can knock on the window real quick or if we're prepping and get stuff ready out of the refrigerator and freezer in there, we can bring it right to the window, open it, set it outside and have everything ready. That really helps eliminate all that back and forth that everybody's talking about. All right, I've talked enough. Thank you again, Vivor, for hooking us up with the, all this stainless stuff right here. That's just awesome. It's just gonna make this space look so much better. And if you're interested in these products, they, uh, I didn't ask them to, they just up and decided to give discounts on everything that you see here. So I'll put all those links down there. It's for a limited time, but if you happen to be interested in any of the drawer sets, the trash pullouts, any of these doors, they've gave pretty substantial discounts. Now, if you need some of this stuff in different sizes, they offer all different kinds of sizes. They also threw a couple coupon codes at, at me that I'll put down there in the description and you can get uh, 10, 20 bucks off, whatever it is, off of anything that you buy. So uh, keep that in mind. Okay, well, it's the weekend. We're gonna enjoy ourselves. First weekend we've had COVID free in several weeks and I've got to make another hardware store run and pick up a bunch more materials. So there's gonna be a delay before you see the next video. Just letting y'all know that doesn't mean work's not going on. I'm working for several days, then recording and getting content out to y'all. All right, catch y'all in the next video.